in this covenant as i was explaining there is blood that has to take place when a covenant is being made that's why you see them sleeping they're so much into uh, molesting young boys mm. sleeping with virgins uh they they like to position themselves in the medical sector these are occult members now these are yes uh -huh. the, the witches i'm telling you that the witches are not only in shrines yes. now they have positioned themselves in in places where in high places they are the ones to make the policies the blood they, bank they, they work they, at the blood bank yes they work at the abortion clinic yes so you see them yes they like that blood that yeah. comes from abortions they're, they're nurses they're yes. doctors they're doctors and they also like the blood that comes when a woman is giving bath uh, many people ask what is witchcraft and many church members uh, stand by the word that there is no witchcraft against Israel which is true but when you're ignorant you can be a victim of witchcraft witchcraft is mind control and manipulation Satan, Satan wants to control people. He wants to control the way they think. And then he also wants to manipulate people because his mission is one. He came to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he will create a problem and present a solution. And, and uh, that's it. Even um, people who contact sorcerers or witch doctors, they go to them thinking or hoping that they are going to find a solution to their problems, not knowing that Satan is the author of their problems. So it's like going to the, to the, to, to the, to the source of your problem to ask for a solution. What the devil will do, he will provide a temporal solution, not a permanent one, and then bring another problem because that's his mission. He wants to keep you in circles. He wants you to keep going there. He wants to covenant you. He wants to hold you. He wants to be in control of your life. And when we talk about witchcraft, we are not talking about witchcraft affecting only individuals. We are talking about witchcraft also uh, that has infiltrated the church. So there are some churches that are being run by sorcerers, by, witch, by witches. Also in the Bible, there was a church, the, the biggest church that was being run by a witch doctor. And then we have uh, witchcraft on nations, witchcraft on territories, witchcraft on families, witchcraft on an individual. So it, it varies. You can, you can survive that individual witchcraft, but if you're not knowledgeable, if you don't have knowledge of how this thing operates, you can be a victim of witchcraft that has been placed on a nation. Let's say you are born again. You only know about accepting Jesus to be in your life as a personal Lord and Savior, but you don't want to know about spiritual things. Why are your children being turned into gay? Because everywhere you see sexual perversion and poverty, no, there is witchcraft. So you're crying right now because your child has been turned into gay because the witchcraft that is holding that territory has infiltrated your home. Welcome again and thank you for being here. You know, when you listen to Erica's testimonies, for me, it makes me think about the churches that we have now and that so many of these churches, they, we, we, we don't get a, a good groundwork. We don't get a good preparation for what is for what we are up against. We learn that Jesus Christ is Lord. We learn that Jesus Christ died on the cross. But many of us, there's so many questions that we still don't learn to answer. And um, I feel like witchcraft is one of those things that can help us to understand Jesus saves you from witchcraft because Jesus saved Erica from witchcraft. He saved her from witchcraft. She was initiated from a young age. And, you know, if we listen to how she described witchcraft as something that is controlling, it controls you. It's, it's meant to control. And even um, we saw a very big example that happened uh, right on this earth a couple of years ago where everyone was, we were forced to participate in a form of witchcraft where people were coerced into taking medication and it was against their will. 
So that in itself, that is witchcraft. That is witchcraft. But we, I feel like the churches don't talk enough about it. How many of us, we understand what that is because we went to a church that explains the powers of witchcraft. I mean, we know that God's power is above all power, but God didn't take the powers away before he, he sent those angels out of heaven, before he cast them down. He didn't take their powers away. And now they are using their powers to do evil and wicked things throughout the earth. So how many churches really discuss with their congregation and inform their congregation that there is such a thing as witchcraft? There is such a thing as mind control, controlling people through doing wicked things, spells and so on. How many of us have pastors that truly go into, I mean, I'm not saying you have to go into an in-depth 101, but at least discuss it so that your congregation will understand that this is real. It's not just a figment of someone's imagination. It's not just, it's, it's not just something that you've made up. It is real. She talked about part of witchcraft being um, offering a temporary solution for a problem that was already, that you caused, which is what, how Satan operates. He causes the problem and then he gives you a temporary solution for that problem. And that's exactly what we saw played out on this earth very, a very short while ago. And I mean, I've heard this also discussed before in another video where the devil would, would seem to solve a problem. So if you have a headache, it would seem to be solved. You would go, maybe that pain would be gone, but the pain is, was just relocated. It didn't go anywhere. It was just, I've heard it discussed before where, I mean, the devil is how he operates because he can't heal you. He can't give you anything good. So people may go to him, go to a shrine or whatever to get healing from something. And you may seem to have been healed of um, something that went wrong with your head, but you won't really heal. The, the, the pain was just shifted to another part of your body. So this is witchcraft. And I think it's important to know that these things are real. Some people like to think, oh, no, those things aren't real. Don't worry about it. But no, these things are real. And it's good to know so that you will know how to fight and how to stand. But why do they like shedding blood? Because it's through blood that, that they are covenanted. That's why Jesus also talks about his blood of the covenant. He, he's covenanting his people to himself. Yep. And he had to shed blood. He had to, 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 to perform a covenant, you know, for us. He had to, I don't know. That, like Zechariah 9 11 says, by the blood of his covenant, he'll set the prisoners free from the pit where there is no water. Because for you to go to that pit, there was a covenant. Right. But the blood of Jesus is above these covenants that the enemy performs. It's above every any uh, is above any sacrifice that can be made. It's a new covenant. Yes. Yeah. So um what these witch doctors do? They open up people's lives through covenants, through shedding of blood. Even the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There are so many covenants that have been done on people's lives, and people don't know. You just see families struggling in a certain area. This family, they are all barren. This family, they are educated, but they die at a certain time. They don't go beyond this age. They don't go beyond 40. This family, they are educated, they don't get married. This family, this and this, they all die from cancer. They all die from this. They have something in common, but it's a calamity. It's not something good. It's a cycle that keeps repeating itself. The grandmother was raped, the mother was raped, and the daughter was also raped. It's a cycle, it's a covenant. And the enemy puts a spirit there to monitor that. It's called a familiar spirit. He puts a spirit to, to, enforce. To, to make sure that that covenant repeats itself. And those familiar spirits also manipulate people. They are manipulative. A person dies and then you start dreaming that person talking to you. The Bible says there is no connection between the living and the dead. So what business do you have with somebody that has gone to rest? So 
this familiar spirit because it has been in the family for generations it even can wear a look of the person that you love that died and it starts now giving instructions and and, and com communicating to you and telling you i was not buried properly you have to bury me in this side this and this has to be done my daughter uh, this is your dad i was murdered by so and so and then you you believe what you have seen in a dream that is called a familiar spirit mm -hmm. so as a child of god you pray and cancel that or and they may show up as an ancestor yes and and you tell them there's no connection between the living and the dead another thing that is important to note because we may see it happening and we're not sure we don't understand why but this is such a real thing and i'm sure that each of us we can see that pattern in our own families i'm sure i can see it in mine i can tell you that where there is some some something that's not good that keeps being repeated from one generation to the next and as she talked about the familiar spirit that is also important to take note of something that monitors your life something that is there to make sure that that evil covenant is upheld and it's just, it's there monitoring your life to make sure that this thing never skips a generation so even you know our parents may have exposed us to different covenants as well their lives the things that happen in their lives expose our lives to different things as well and there has to come a point where those evil covenants and contracts are broken so that they're not passed on to the next generation and uh, in this covenant as i was explaining there is blood that has to take place when a covenant is being made. That's why you see them sleeping. They're so much into uh, molesting young boys, mm. sleeping with virgins. Uh, they, they like to position themselves in the medical sector. These are occult members now. These are, yes, uh -huh. the, the witches. I'm telling you, the, the witches are not only in shrines. Yes. Now they have positioned themselves in, in places where, in high places, they are the ones to make the policies. The blood they, bank. They, they work they, at the blood bank. Yes. They work at the abortion clinic. Yes. So you see them. Yes. They like that blood that yeah. comes from abortions. They're, they're nurses. They're yes. doctors. They're doctors. And they also like the blood that comes when a woman is giving birth not saying all witches are doctors i mean by the way witches yeah, are nurses and doctors that's why it's just important. some of them if you're pregnant to pray about the doctors that are going to 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 deliver help your you baby. deliver your baby because what happens in this situation is if you get in contact with a witch you can even have a normal delivery and then something goes something that even the doctors can't explain goes is, wrong yeah and the person begins to overbleed to death but the person gave birth normally. Uh, you find a baby healthy. The baby was healthy. And then after a short time, a complication. And then the baby goes, you know, just like that. No explanation. Even the other doctors are so, uh, they are so amazed. They are like, we've never seen a thing like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of them have a tendency of neglecting the, the, the patients and just uh, choosing to look at them die. They carelessly do things because they have to sacrifice and they like the blood of women who are giving birth. They like blood that comes from abortions. They like blood of virgins. They like blood of innocent babies because they are pure and their, their energies are great. So when, when they can steal the energies from that life, they are able to, to get promotions they are able to expand their businesses because these doctors, even if they are working in a government hospital, they also have their small businesses. In other words, the, the kingdom of darkness operates at the expense of humanity. Yes. At the expense of innocence, at the expense of people. Yeah. Usually people who are ignorant and then, or helpless. or in And this is also true. Um, I mean, some hospitals are even... Um, synagogues of satan really where the doctors have made pledges covenants with satan so that he would have his share of blood constantly being poured from those hospitals so that's why you see you have to be careful even where you go for care for treatment 
you pray, pray for your loved ones if you have a loved one in the hospital. Because some of these doctors, if you listen to that other video that I did on She Killed 20 Babies, some of these doctors are in covenants with Satan and they are there to shed innocent blood. So you may think that your loved one are in good hands. But if you're not a prayerful person, and if these doctors have made covenants and contracts with Satan, then what you're thinking may not necessarily be true, believing that these are good doctors and that they're there to help you. This is a spiritual world. And they, everything that we, we, we experience in life, it comes from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. That's why we affect things through prayer. We affect what will happen, what could happen through prayer. We do not use witchcraft. As, as children of God, we don't resort to witchcraft. That's what Satanists do. That's what people of, of Satan do. But we resort to prayer because we are calling on the higher power, which is the most high God. And we're calling on Jesus Christ because we know that he alone can save us and protect us from all of the wickedness that happens around us. So we do not, we do not live in fear, but we live aware. We do not live in fear, but we live aware. There are so many people that like to challenge whether or not God is real. All of these wicked, evil things happening in the world. You live in a world, you're unaware of where you live. You're unaware of all the spiritual things happening right in your family line, right in your bloodline. And you want to challenge and say that there is no God and that there is not enough proof. Sadly, many of the people who are challenging the existence of God have fallen to their graves and realizing that they've made it the biggest mistake that they could ever have made by challenging whether or not God is real. Even in spite of hearing so many different testimonies of different people who said that Jesus Christ saved me from witchcraft, Jesus Christ saved me from sorcery, Jesus Christ saved me from uh, hell. So many, I mean, there are countless uh, testimonies right now and people are telling you in depth the stories that they've, the things that they've been through while they were in the kingdom of darkness, when they were warlocks, when they were witches, when they were satanists, when they were in hell, they are telling you in depth details. And you still dare to be so arrogant as to question the existence of the most high God when they're telling you that Jesus Christ showed up and saved them. It's such an arrogant and hardened heart that would still turn around and say, prove it. Prove Jesus is real, prove God is real. Prove it. That is the height of arrogance and stupidity because you are being told that hell is a place where you don't escape, from which you do not escape. You do not and cannot escape hell. So now you choose, because of your arrogance, you choose to risk going to a place where, you will, where there is no exit, from which you will never escape, all because you want somebody to prove to you that they used to be a witch and that, that Jesus uh, saved them. Too many countless testimonies, too many witnesses, too many people bearing witness to the same thing for you to now show up before the Most High God and say, well, nobody proved it. Well, on that day, you will have all the proof you need. It's going to be too late, but you will have all the proof you need since you want proof. Since you want proof and you can't humble yourself and ask God to show you, ask him to show you. You want to throw as though... Listen, it's your soul. It's your soul that's going to perish. Not these people who are turning away from their witchcraft. Not these people who are being saved because they saw hell. It's your soul. So if you want to take that chance with your soul, it's sad, yes, because God is the one and you want to perish. But he's not going to force you. He is not going to force you. I'm here warning souls to choose life. He has come that we might have life and life more abundantly. Choose life. The devil does not give life. He gives death and destruction. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come that we might have life and life more abundantly. Think about your eternal soul. Don't listen to people who tell you when you're dead, you're done. When you're dead, you're done. No. When you're dead, the physical body is done, but that's about it, not your soul. Your physical body is done when you're dead, not your soul. Choose life. I thank you for being here, and until 
next time.